I think of all of the types, ENTP videos get the most strangely inconsistent views. So if you're an ENTP and you want more ENTP videos on the channel, click the subscribe button and that will let us know. ENTPs throughout history are characterized by a certain type of genius, and that is the polymath, or the Renaissance man or woman. It's a multidisciplinary aptitude that at times kind of seems superhuman. ENTPs hate limitations and almost take it personally when someone says something cannot be done, or become relentless in their desire to prove someone wrong when they make that claim personal and say that the ENTP themselves cannot do it. They, possibly more than any other type, have an almost limitless capacity to enjoy the varieties that life has to offer, all the way from the intellectual to the absurd. Autodidacts. This is definitely not something exclusive to ENTPs, but it is, I think, integral. In order to overturn conventional wisdom, you have to rethink the fundamental assumptions that thinking is based on. And ENTPs can often circumvent this by simply at least trying to teach themselves. And there are quite a few benefits to being self-taught in an area. The fundamentals sink in more deeply. Because you will encounter problems that you have to figure out for yourself without any input from a source of authority or an expert, you will often independently arrive at the fundamental aspects of a field. But instead of them simply being told to you, you instead see in practice why they're necessary. So you don't have that strange stage at the start of learning something where you're being told all these facts, but you don't really understand why they're important. If I were to say to someone, here's a scale on the piano. This is a group of notes that sound complementary and harmonious together. You can use this scale to make chord progressions or melodies. That's absolutely fine. But an alternative approach would be ask them to go to the piano, sit down and just play around and see if they can come up with something that sounds good. Suddenly, they have a question. Wait, why does this sound good? Or why does it suddenly sound bad if I change this one note? Then you explain it's because of scales, etc. In the second scenario, the knowledge that's being provided is solving a problem and answering a question for the person, rather than simply being some arbitrary fact. So when you're self-taught, some things will take a while to learn. Things that people who learn the conventional way might learn on day one. Yet the value, the importance, and the usefulness of those concepts is much more appreciated and sinks deeper. It's like you see the underlying logic much more clearly and can therefore, later down the line, use it in more creative ways. I see ENTPs do this all the time. I wouldn't say they have a disdain for experts because that's obviously unfair, but let's just say your status as an authority doesn't hold much sway for them until they've analyzed it themselves and decided for themselves whether it makes sense. There's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. Speaking as someone who reads a lot of advice-giving books and is someone who tends to dish out advice whether people have asked for it or not, I'd say that when reading a book on anything from self-help to learning to cook to learning piano, take them seriously but not always literally. You don't always have to start in the order that the book says. And sometimes the rules that are outlined turn out to be guidelines. ENTPs are kind of exceptional at entering an endeavor without the burden of preconceived notions. I've seen countless examples of ENTPs just diving into an idea or a plan. And as I'm telling them, oh, I think you're gonna run up against this problem. They're already in the process of solving it. Sometimes you discover new ways. Expertise can seem like such a fixed thing, but of course, in reality, it's built from the innovations of individual contributors who find new ways to do things that at the time would have seemed counterintuitive. It's a strange paradoxical situation where in order to contribute to conventional knowledge, sometimes you have to ignore it. Transcontextual thinking. This seems to be a term that is actually only used in the personality type community, but I do like the idea. It's the ability to draw parallels from vastly different areas, and in the case of the ENTP, to make logical conclusions about them. So to solve problems, you can adopt and adapt solutions from different fields. The ENTP mind is like a spider web with many threads. I think that is because of the top two functions of extroverted intuition and introverted thinking acting in tandem. You can follow each of these threads to the linear 
logical conclusion that lies at the end of it. But if you reach a roadblock en route, you can stop and look around and leapfrog onto another parallel thread. One that is closely related and could, with slight modifications, hold the insights to clear the way. To even have these options available to you, you have to be interested in many things. Whereas some people and certain types will come across as very narrow in their interests and focus on the depth of their skill in one particular area. ENTPs are just more eclectic and open and broad. However, to say that ENTPs spread themselves too thin, I think kind of misses the point. As I've mentioned before, their brilliance or their genius comes from the fact that they occupy that middle of the Venn diagram, the overlap between different areas of life, the intersection between different fields. That is where most of the creativity happens. So I'm always kind of reluctant to type historical figures because I never feel like I've done enough research, but there are two people who stand out both as geniuses and as ENTPs, and those are Leonardo da Vinci and Benjamin Franklin. Both men were undoubtedly polymaths, autodidacts, and two of the most creative people in history. Da Vinci was an exceptional inventor. There is a famous drawing of what people say is the precursor to a modern day helicopter. So I looked into this to see how true it was and at the behest of one of his patrons. Also, feel free to check out our Patreon as well. I mean, Da Vinci's dead and you know, we're still alive. He was tasked with doing the stage designs for theatrical productions they would put on. And that design for the helicopter shape was actually originally intended for the effect of bringing down angels from the rafters so they would float down in an elegant way. His intention with that was simply to create a nice effect, but you can instantly see how if he applied that in a different field, suddenly you could indeed have a precursor to a modern day helicopter. It's this sense of being completely unbridled in your interests fascinated to the point of being in-depth sometimes, but never bound by specification too much. As many people said, he occupied the intersection between art and science. His knowledge of anatomy was exceptional, and he was oddly allowed to dissect dead bodies, which at the time, I'm not sure was quite legal. He figured out why the sky was blue. He discovered certain diseases hundreds of years before they became well known. He also designed machines that were intended for the battlefield. And among all of these mind-blowing achievements, he also happens to be probably the most famous artist of all time. Then there's Benjamin Franklin, who invented a new musical instrument. He was involved in writing the Declaration of Independence, sadly, via his famous kite experiments, invented a device that would help protect houses from the damage and effects of lightning. He was also one of America's first millionaires. He may have actually even been the first. As well as being an exceptional diplomat and writer, he's another example of a famous ENTP multi-field genius. Study the science of art. Study the art of science. Develop your senses. Learn how to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. I think that last line outlines the key to the ENTP mindset. Everything is connected to everything else. You just have to know the right path to take. Plus, they can also be charming bastards.